Okay, so I've started my journey for the colonoscopy and the scope. <sighs> it is <clears throat> Wednesday. Uh, what's the date today? Today's the 18th. Um, I'm getting my colonoscopy on Friday. So, um, uh, I read the instructions and everything. I <laughs> I went to go to the pharmacy to get my prescription for the stuff that I'm supposed to take. They wanted me to take a four liter jug of stuff. And I was like, ah, uh, hell no, not gonna happen. <clears throat> so I asked them if there was an alternative and they said yes. Um, because the last time I had the colonoscopy, it was, it was crazy. It was crazy. I won't get into detail, but let's just say it was bad. Um, <clears throat> I don't ever want to go through that again. Um, it was embarrassing. It was, it, it, <laughs> if George and I weren't, we weren't close before, man. <laughs> You know, like he saw all the ugly coming out of me. <laughs> um, gave him a little bit of a different perspective, I'll tell you. Um, so I decided that I did not want to go through that again. So I'm, I'm, I was trying to figure out a game plan. So what I did was, like it tells me that I'm supposed to do like a liquidy kind of diet or like a light diet five days before and then the day before the surgery I go to a excuse me oh, a liquid diet so I decided because I started this three days before the surgery instead um, I was going to just do liquid diet all the way through because yeah I'm not going back to that so they gave me some Docolax. I took two Docolax pills last night and I was up until like 2 o'clock in the morning freaking out. I was just like, I do not want to be sleeping and have something happen. Um, because our bathroom is like on the other side of the house. <clears throat> so I know from experience from last time that if you have to go and you have to go now, I'm not going to make it. So, um, I decided to just do the liquid diet for the three days before the surgery. I've never done a liquid diet before. Um, in the carnivore community and the keto community and all that, they do like fasting for 30 days or fasting for a week or I don't know how they do it I don't I oh my good lord um so I haven't eaten anything since last night uh it is now one o'clock in the afternoon I am drinking chicken bullion <laughs> um I can tell that my sugar levels or something are dropping or something's going on because I got a headache and um, I'm not feeling wonderful I uh, yeah my stomach was really queasy there for a while but that that was those were hunger pains so I'm gonna start drinking my chicken broth now I'm supposed to eat three to six liters of fluid starting tomorrow or whatever it's like oh my god and anyway, we waterlogged <clears throat> and then they said oh stay away from um, red purple blue dyes and stuff like that in drinks but it said, you know, okay, you can get cranberry juice, you can get grape juice, you can get all this. But I didn't realize it said white. 
So I went and got regular cranberry juice. So <clears throat> I'm going to have to um, get some white cranberry juice. I didn't even know they made white cranberry juice. <laughs> so yeah. So the next couple of days is going to be fun. I'm going to be crocheting my brains out, which is probably a good thing because this um, cloak that I'm making is taking forever. I got four inches. Oh, wow. Oh, I forgot I had this on autofocus. Well, that's kind of cool. Oh. Huh. Um, so yeah, I've got, uh, about four inches on this and I've got to do 10. I'm working on three different things right now. So, and I've got so many things going on in my head that, you know, I'm going, I want to make this, I want to make this. I've got my list. Oh, I've got a book here. I'm writing stuff down. Um, oh, and yeah. Yeah, I broke my hook that I was using for this. Hmm. I guess you guys saw that short that I did. I am absolutely just beyond words. Uh, I sent an email to Furls. They still haven't gotten back to me. Um, rude. <laughs> so uh, I ended up switching to a different hook. Um, same size, different hook. And it seems to be okay. I think it's all right. It's going a lot smoother, I'll tell you that. So I don't know if that hook had like sharp edges on it or something. But um, yeah, it's actually working out a little bit faster. So that's good. <clears throat> Less hurting on my head. <laughs> so yeah, I. Uh, so that's what I'm doing for the next couple of days. I'll take you on my journey, and uh, hopefully it all goes well. Oh, I gotta start taking the Pico Colax or whatever the heck it's called. Um, tomorrow? What is it? Wednesday, Thursday? Yeah, tomorrow. That's when. That's when it. Yeah, things get really interesting. I may have to camp out in the bathroom or something. But I'm hoping that having the liquid diet is gonna help. So anyway, okay, I'll talk to you guys in a while. Okay, so I've come to the conclusion that I'm really bored or something. <laughs> I'm bored with what I'm drinking. So I have this um, Nescafe instant coffee. Okay. Um, I'm not an instant coffee person, but this was hazelnut. So... I thought I'd try it. Now, I'm not, apparently I'm not allowed to have any milk products or milk substitutes. So, I don't know. I'm going to try this and see how it goes. I put a little bit of um, uh, Truvia in it, which is a sh sugar substitute. Uh, black coffee, guys. This is what I'm resorting to. Yikes. Here we go. Oh my God, that's not bad. <laughs> that is not terrible. I, I never drink black coffee. My dad used to drink black coffee all the time. That's all he ever drank. But... Oh my God, that is... I can do this. Oh, I could cry. I'm so happy. <laughs> um, that hazelnut makes a huge difference. I'm shocked. Um, yeah. Wow. You know, drinking black coffee before, it was like it hurt my stomach and I just, I couldn't handle it. This I can handle. Oh my God. I can have my coffee in the morning. <gasps> mm, 
Okay, guys. Game changer. Maybe this won't be so bad after all. <laughs> Hi, Erin Bees. Well, I'm on my way to the hospital to get this procedure done. I am done. I am so done. It's uh, It's been a long three days of not eating and the other. <laughs> running, a lot of running. A lot, a lot of, of running. Yeah. Um, I actually had to sit up with a chair and my computer, my crochet and everything in the bathroom for about five, five or six hours because I just couldn't make it to the bathroom in time. It was awful. So, so we're on our way there now. And I'll just, I'll be glad when this is done. I'll be able to hopefully get the webbing in my throat dealt with. Yes. And, uh, I know there's nothing wrong with the colonoscopy, but, you know, they booked that when, uh, when I had my diverticulitis attack, so. But, well. That's a two for one special today. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had a really bad experience if any of you remember the video I did last time, I had a really bad experience with this um, the last time I had it done. So I'm hoping it goes a little more smoothly this with the time. Throat thing. Yeah, the throat, the throat thing was just horrible. I remember all of it. Oh, God. <clears throat> so anyway, okay, I will let you guys know how it goes. Hi, <laughs> hi, Yarnabees. It's me, Sandy. Um, I just wanted to sign off this video and tell you what happened. Um, <clears throat> well, my procedure's all finished. I'm back home, obviously. Uh, I gotta say that the staff at the, is it Oncology uh, Center that at the Nanaimo Hospital is fantastic. Um, my personal nurse, RJ, no, JR, JR, JR. <laughs> um, he, he was fabulous. He really helped me with my anxiety. Um, <clears throat> he had a very gentle touch, you know, like he, um, really tried to make me feel like it was going to be okay. Um, and he, he really helped me because I was, my anxiety was through the roof. I'll tell you that. Um, <clears throat> the nurse that I had in the OR was wonderful. I think her name was Michelle. She was with me the whole time. Just, you know, right there with me, rubbing my arm, telling me it was okay. Uh, you know, um, yeah, I can't say enough about them. Uh, I may have to bring them a gift. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, one thing I will say though, is compared to the, the one I had before, which was not fun, not fun at all. I remember getting the scope down the throat. Um, <clears throat> sorry, my throat still is a bit sore. Um, I remember, I don't remember the colonoscopy very much. Uh, I pretty much slept through that, but the scope was horrible. Uh, when they gave me the stuff to drink, it was like instant throat close, right? Like it, it didn't close, but everything froze and I panicked because I could not feel myself breathing and I lost it. And they knocked me out and I, I was just, oh, it was awful. And then I could, I would, I would wake up and I would hear myself going, <laughs> you know, and I could feel the scope and it was, I, it was a nightmare. Um, I have claustrophobia. So the fact, the feeling of not being able to breathe like that threw me into such panic, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> um, Oh, it was awful. Not to mention that the, uh, the prep work I had to do before was disastrous. It was disastrous. Um, 
I, I don't ever want to go through that again. So this time I got, so I thought I got smart. I started my prep a couple days before I told them <clears throat> when I went in to get my, my stuff, I think you probably saw the clip. They, they were going to give me a four gallon, like gallon jug of stuff to drink. And I said, Oh hell no. Uh, uh, I'm not doing that. Um, I said it, most of it will get wasted. I said, because I won't drink it. Uh, I have come to the conclusion that I am extremely susceptible to different things, right? Not susceptible. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> I know you guys probably all yelling it at me, but <coughs> sensitive, that's the word. <clears throat> I'm very sensitive to stuff. So um, I knew that doing that, uh, drinking that stuff. Oh, there's George. Recording? No, I'm just talking to the wall. I thought you might be having coffee with somebody. I apologize. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. I'm very sensitive to medications and surgeries and all that kind of stuff. So I knew if I drank all that, that it would be a disaster. So what I did was I, uh, or they, they gave me pills, right? They gave me Dokalax, which you can get over the counter. So I had to take two of those on the Wednesday and I had to take two more on the Thursday and no, sorry, two, two on the Tuesday, two on the Wednesday. And then on the Thursday, I started taking, um, this, the stuff that they gave you, gave me in, in little packets which you take one packet one night and one packet the other night or the, the, or the morning of the surgery, which I think is really ridiculous. They make you do this at eight o'clock at night. Like you're going to be pooping through the night. And with me, you know, everybody says, oh, it's no big deal. Well, you guys must be having solid poops or something because for me, it was not that. It was liquidy and projectile, you know, so... Um, like it was a horror show the first time. So this time I took the Dokalax for the two days and it was way better, <clears throat> way better. But, um, I wasn't going to take any chances. So I ended up, um, I, I waited for a little while and I ended up you know, having a bit of an accident. So what I did was I took my chair, I took this chair into the bathroom. I took a table, I took my computer, I took my crochet, I took some stuff to drink. Um, I took a blanket. I took all the things that I needed for the comfort into the bathroom. And I sat in the bathroom for about six hours. And I am so glad I did because I... Obviously, I can't get to the bathroom in time. So this was just like a two steps, boom, done, right? And it made a world of difference. It, I wasn't overly comfortable, you know, but um, it really saved my bacon, let me just say. So uh, when I started taking the, the other stuff, the powdered stuff, I knew that that was really going to hit me. And so I did the same thing. <clears throat> Um, by that time, I think I was somewhat, you know, finished what everything that had to come out. So it wasn't too bad. I did get some crocheting done though. <laughs> um, and then the, yesterday, the morning of, there wasn't really a whole lot. So it was good. It was okay. Uh, so that was, that was nice. Uh, I had it in my mind. Okay. This is what, oh, and I also didn't eat for three days. Just saying, um, I didn't eat any solid food. I just had some fluids for three days, uh, so that I, I didn't have a whole, you know, well, I didn't think I had a whole lot to, you've got like 25 feet of colon or of intestines and stuff that you have to clean out. Right. So that's a lot. Um, but yeah, so 
I lost about five pounds. <laughs> so that's good. Um, but with my, my, um, diabetes and stuff, um, my sugar levels were dropping. And so I'm glad that it's over. So now that I can get back to my regular schedule programming, <laughs> so, but when, but this time during the surgery, um, I was awake pretty much for the whole colonoscopy. So it was the reverse, which I am thankful for because I, I did not want to live through that scope again. Um, so the colonoscopy was actually, it hurt. Like I was cramping and I could feel it, but I get, I got to watch everything on this screen, which was really interesting. Um, I, uh, I had no idea that's what your, your, your intestines and stuff looked like. But it was really nice because Michelle was, she was rubbing my arm and she was saying, okay, honey, we're going to go around a corner now. So it's going to be a little uncomfortable. And then I'd be like, ow, 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 you know, and she'd be, you know, coaching me through it all. And I was just like, you know, she was the sweetest woman and she really helped me a lot. So, um, kudos to, um, the Nanaimo oncology. So uh, but yeah, it was, uh, it was good. It was really good. Um, I don't want to go through it again. No, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> the freezing's out now. My throat's kind of sore, but I, I have felt a bit of a change. Um, I still don't know if she got rid of the webbing. Uh, I asked her to, when I went in and she said that she's going to take a look and see but she says that a lot of times the scope will take care of it, that it will break through it. Um, and if not, then she'll figure out what's what, but I can feel right here where the webbing was or where the webbing is. I think that's where the webbing is. That's where it's sore. <coughs> Excuse me. So I, I would imagine that maybe she did do something. Um, when I'm laying on my couch, I'm laying back and my head's kind of like bent a bit and I'm crocheting. Um, I noticed that it just feels like somebody's got their hand around my throat and there's pressure and I can't breathe very well. I did that last night. I didn't feel that pressure. <clears throat> so I have a feeling that it's gone. Uh, I'm going to find out my test results in about two or three weeks. I did come home with a piece of paper and they, they did tell me, uh, in recovery that they, I mean, they saw my hiatus, my hiatus hernia. Uh, they did see my diverticulitis, <clears throat> but they also saw something else and they did a biopsy. They did a few biopsies but they did a biopsy on this, whatever it was. And they, they think she, she has a hunch that it is this. Now I can't pronounce that, but I'm sure that there are people out there in my YouTube community that have this and know exactly what it is. I didn't realize until I was looking it up online last night that this is what um, the, the absolutely adorably sweet um, Ashley from um, Stitching Ain't Easy, that's what she has. Now, I've been watching her channel for, well, since she came out. It's been a couple of years now. That poor girl, she has really gone through it. Um, she has not only that, she has a host of other, other issues as well, but this is what's been giving her a lot of the medical problems that she has been dealing with. <clears throat> when I saw that video, at it's, um, her story, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that link down below of her channel. It scared the crap out of me and I thought oh my dear god you know if this is what I've got <sighs> number one it explains a lot of things 
I went down the checklist of things that Ashley was talking about and it, yeah, I, I was like, oh, mm -hmm. that explains some things. Um, I don't think that I have, uh, if I have it, I don't think it's a, a really severe case of it. Um, but it does explain a few things. I'll find out when, <clears throat> when the test results come back, when the biopsy comes back, uh, if this is really what I've got. Uh, and then I'll just have to deal with, deal with whatever I got to deal with. Um, but yeah. Oh, hold on. Go on to practice. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Have fun. It's work. <laughs> George is going to dragon boat practice in the rain. Huh? Oh, it actually stopped raining. Oh, lucky him. <laughs> it was raining this morning. <clears throat> so anyway, um, yeah, Ash, Ashley's got it really, really bad, and I feel for that girl. Oh my God, like she's she's really she's really sick. And there isn't anything anybody can do about it. You know, like she's seen doctors. She's, she's done test run, uh, um, trials. She's, oh, she's just, she's just had a, had a bad go of it. So, um, I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen. We'll see. But anyways, I just wanted to let you know how it all went. And, uh, that I'm okay. Uh, <clears> the <throat> throat's a bit sore, but I'm going to live. I'm working on a tutorial for you guys. Uh, it's going to be coming out at the end of the month. So, um, hopefully you've seen my posts on my community tab and my Instagram. Did I put it on Instagram and my Facebook site? So, okay. So I will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for your love and I will talk to you soon. Okay.